So you want to needle felt a realistic cat head. I often hear people say that cat heads are so hard to make, but I want to reassure you that they really aren't that hard. In this series, I'll break it down to you in small, easy to understand chunks. I'll show you how to make the head of a tabby Berman cat. So by the end of this series, this is what you can achieve. Here she is with her fur on. This tutorial is part one, how to needle felt a cat head shape. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have made this cat head shape out of core wool. You'll have sculpted it firmly and it'll have all its facial features ready to put the fur on. <coughs> don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any tutorials. Here's what you'll need for the basic cat head shape. As well as a felting mat, you'll need some carded core wool that's about an arm's length, a range of felting needles, I'll pop the ones I use in the description below. I'll form the basic shape with my lower gauge needles and then go up to higher gauge the more I define and firm up. I also use some coloured pins. Before we get stabbing, here's a quick lesson on cat head anatomy. I find it so much easier to know about proportions before I start sculpting. Have photos of real cats at the ready so that you can reference them when you're doing your cat head shape. I'm going to sketch this for you to make it easier. I've simply drawn a basic circle and then I've divided it into quarters. In the bottom half, draw another line halfway. And this smaller circle represents the muzzle area. I'm also going to draw the side profile so you can see that this part protrudes outwards. Where you've halved the half, half that again, and that's the bottom of your nose. Then draw a steep diagonal line from the nose up into where the eye would start. The eyes are positioned on that half line. So you see that the majority of the top part of the cat's head is actually forehead area. The main features are below the line with the eyes along it. The forehead whiskers go around about here. I'll also draw in what I call the whisker pad parts of the uh, muzzle there. There we go, just needs a little bit more definition. When I'm getting a basic shape, I like to refer back to really basic drawings so that I can really see the lines and the shapes rather than getting really distracted by fur patterns. So that's why I sketch mine out beforehand. You might want to do the same. To place the ears, I'm going to draw a vertical line up from the centre of each eye. That's where the ear would start, on the top of the forehead. Keep checking back with the real photos to make sure your ears are just the right size and your eyes are too. The exact proportions of all of the features of the cat face will really depend on the breed of cat as well. Remember that we're doing a 3D sculpture rather than a painting, so you'll need to check that the proportions are right looking on the side profile. Again, just popping in where the ears might go. I'm also doing a very quick sketch of a slightly different angle of the side profile as well. Needle felting an oval ball. You can start off any ball shape with using a length of your core wool and tightly rolling it into a ball. You can do it this way, but I want to show you the knot technique. Take your length of wool and then tie it simply into a knot in the centre. Tug it tightly and then tightly wrap each end around the knot. You get a feel for which way it should go. This gives a really good basis to work from and it can save quite a bit of time as well. I'm using a 36 gauge star which is just perfect for starting off the shape of something and it, it makes it really fast. I'm holding the ball to start with to hold it in place while I stab away. Once it feels more secure, I can then move the ball around, getting to every angle. The ball will shrink in size slightly, as I felt, and will become firmer. The tighter you roll your ball to start with, then the quicker it'll be. 
I'm now tucking that loose edge and felting that in now as well. I'm keeping this more oval than I am a spherical round ball. I'm speeding this up because it takes a very long time, but you will see how I move the piece round as I go. I'm evening out any lumps and bumps as I go. When I start to feel some resistance with my lower gauge needle, I'll move up to my slightly higher gauge, which is a 38 star. I'm adding another layer to bulk it out a little bit. Going over that with my 36 star to start with and then moving on to my 38 star. You can roll it in your warm hands to help make the shape as well. Keep stabbing and keep stabbing. It will take some time to get the shape that you need. There should be no loose fibres or lumpy bits. So keep going until you've got a really nice smooth finish to your piece. Now don't make it completely firm or rock solid. What you want to have is to aim for a kind of medium softness where you can still pose it and push it and manipulate it into shape. We're gonna firm it up a lot harder later once we've made the basic facial features. In this fourth section, we're going to mark the facial features. So get your colored pins at the ready. On one end of the oval, we're going to mark out the eyes and the nose. The other end is going to become the rounded back part of the head. The face side will become more tapered and it's still got some give so you can make it into the shape that you want. So carefully press with your index fingers where the eye sockets may go, according to your diagram. Then I'm using my 40 gauge triangle needle to stab a line along the right bridge of the nose and then the left. At this stage, it's just marking out where I want the nose and the eyes to be. You could use a pen at this point, but I find that this is actually really helpful to get the shape started to sculpt the nose into place and to know where the eye sockets are. It also means if I do something wrong, then I can easily fix it without having pen marks all over my piece. It's a real mix of using my fingers to manipulate the wool, but also to use the needle to really push in the areas that I want them to go back. It almost looks a bit like a barn owl at the moment, but you'll see it come together as we progress. I'm really narrowing up the muzzle area. Grab a thick piece of your core wool and then add it to the centre of the forehead to build some height. I go between my 38 and 40 gauge triangle for this. Then add another wad just behind that to extend it further to the back of the head. And then a third piece across the centre along the join of the two pieces. So all together it should create like a nice little slopey hill. Now measure roughly where the eyes are going to be placed along that centre line. And put your pins in. We'll also do the nose in a second, but also look from the side and refer to your side profile picture you'll likely find that you need to place the pin slightly further back. Look from the top as well. And pop a pin in where the tip of the nose will go. Make sure you're happy with it from your diagram, checking from the side and different angles. At this point, add one layer of the core wool around the width of the head. Stab the wool into place until it's nice and even. In section five, we're going to add the muzzle and chin. Take two small lengths of your core wool and roll each of them into loose oval balls. Stab 
stab them a tiny tiny bit just so that they don't unravel. You don't need to complete their shape because most of the sculpting is going to happen once they've been added to the face. With my right one I didn't feel it was thick enough so I'm adding an extra piece around it. Position each one just below the nose pin. These will form the whisker pads of the muzzle. Stab the ends into place and just a little bit around the edge. Once they're both on, you can really start to shape them. Take a good look at the real cat that you are copying to get the correct size and width. The size and shape of the muzzle and chin area can really differ across the breeds. If you're making a mancoon, for example, you might want to make the muzzle stand out and be bulky and wide, very much like a lion. And some breeds have a flattened muzzle, just like this Persian. And this tiny Siamese kitten has a really dainty, narrow muzzle. So look at the detail of your real cat and decide how wide the shape and how protruded it should be away from the face. Make sure the two pieces match. Mine was a little bit too narrow on this side. I'm going to add a bit more bulk. That's the wonderful thing about wool. You can add more. Keep looking from different angles, especially from underneath as well, to make sure that it looks just right. You will be adding fur later on, but it's really important to get the shapes right to start with as a really good foundation. So next we'll move on to the chin. Roll a piece of wool in the same way that you did with the whisker pads, but make it more cylindrical. Stab a little bit along the length, but then leave one end loose and the other make more rounded with your needle. The width of this piece will really depend on your breed. Mine your fingers at this point when working with small pieces. That end should have a lovely curve to it. Now getting the position of the chin right is really crucial. Keep it central, but then look from the side. What you don't want is for it to overlap and come out too far, but you don't want it to go too far back either. So place it just marginally back from the whisk pads. When stabbing the chin into place, try to stab just where the flat part is, leaving the rounded edge quite free. You don't want to flatten that rounded part. Then very carefully go in from the sides to get the width that you want. I want the mouth to be really closed. So I am going to pull it in tight and make sure that the gap between the whisker pads and the chin is fairly narrow. Hold the rounded part of the chin tightly in place with your thumb and then with your needle very carefully go along that very top edge of the chin to fix it in place. That's great for now. We're going to come back later to do much more sculpting around the mouth area. Next, we're going to fill out the face a bit more. So roll up two big wads of wool. I'm going to use these to fill out the face a lot more because my tabby Berman has quite a wide, lovely, fleshy face. Some breeds are a lot slimmer, such as the Siamese. A lot of her face is going to be furry but I want to create the width to start with. I'm simply placing each of these at the side of the head and stabbing the wool into place with my 36 star. Keep going until you get a lovely even finish. Then add a shorter length over the top of the head. Adding layers like this is a great way to add bulk to your piece. Then add a layer similar to this underneath the chin. Next we'll do some firming up of the wool. Before we do, what cat breed do you think you'll start making? 
Let me know in the comments below, I would love to know. Now you've got the basic shape, there's still some give to the wall. So it's important to now firm up your sculpture. I'm going over the whole head with my needle. I'm choosing a slightly higher gauge when I feel that resistance. So I'm using my 40 gauge triangle at this point. As well as firming, I want to really define those edges as well around the nose area, around the eye socket area. Eliminate any lumps and bumps or loose fibers. Any dimples, you can add a tiny bit more wool as like a patch over and stab that into place as well. The whole surface should be smooth and really becoming more firm. Now for the nose and brow sculpting. Remove the nose pin and then we're going to add a bit more wool to build up the nose to a bit of a height and more defined. A bit like with the chin, make one end a defined end where the nose tip will be. Keep to the lines that you've already marked out and keep stabbing until you make that lovely nose shape. Then take small pieces for the eyebrow area. I'm not making the shapes before I add them. I'm simply adding pieces of wool and then sculpting once they're on the cat face. Keep stabbing with the needle to firm it up. You'll find that using your fingers to manipulate the wool into shape really helps and then you can stab that into place to secure it and firm it even more. This really is sculpting with wool. Check from the side to make sure you have the angle correct. Where the bridge of the nose meets the forehead, this should be fairly steep. So you can use your fingers to create that shape and then stab it into place. Take a piece for your other eyebrow and then do the same again. Add more wool where you need to. You can really see those feline features emerging now. I really sped up this piece of footage. It takes a lot of stabbing, but hopefully you can see the process. I'm deepening those eye sockets, really defining along the side of the nose, along the bridge, really defining the shape and sculpting it firm. Try to make the cat head as firm as possible because later on, when we add the fur in a later tutorial in the series, you'll see that if you make it too soft, it'll lose its shape as you add the fur and the fur won't attach correctly. The ninth step is to define the mouth and the jawline. Starting off by squeezing the whisker pads together and then firming them up with my needle to start with. Then go over the chin a tiny bit, not too much, but the main aim is to really make this whole muzzle area more secure and solid. Then really concentrate your needle along that mouth line, almost into a smile. Extend out to the jaw line. You'll see that it dips in a little bit in your diagram. Really concentrate your needle in that area to define that part as well. And do the same on the other side. And lastly, we have the cheekbones. In a later video, when we've done the eyes, I'll show you a little bit more about bulking out these cheek areas. But for now, I just want to define the cheekbone um, by concentrating the needle along this line here. Again, you can use your fingers just to make that little dimple.
And there we go, your cat head shape all completed. Ready for its fur, its eyes, its ears. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. You might want to watch this one next.